The topic of today's lecture is Era of Uncertainty in Pakistan's Foreign Policy, Determinants, Trends, and Search for Stability. This is, uh, first, this is the first lecture of the series of the lectures that we will have in the combined session of around 45 topics and the reading of the same topic with the updated version will also be shared in the WhatsApp group of all the candidates who get a prior registration to this particular uh, session. I will be sharing the details in the end uh, uh, so that you can just access this uh, this session uh, or you can just part, be part of this session so without any further disruption I'm, I'm just going to talk about today's topic i would be discussing this topic first and later allowing you individuals to uh, have a word on this so the foreign policy of pakistan this topic basically contains this particular outline we will be talking about following things which include what is foreign policy? What are objectives of foreign policy of Pakistan in line with the current administration at hand? What are the major determinants of Pakistan's foreign policy, followed by the global power dynamics or the change shifting global uh, geopolitics and shifting sense of the ge global geopolitics, uh, followed by the critical assessment of the foreign policy uh, from 2018 to 2021 so that you may have a clear-cut analysis, clear-cut overview as to what has happened in Pakistan and uh, on foreign policy front and what, uh, what has gone good or bad. What are, what are the major achievements during this particular tenure? What are certain challenges that Pakistan currently faces in uh, the inherently uh, polarized world? Then what is the future? What are future recommendations? What is the course correction that Pakistan can and should take in order to have an effective foreign policy abroad? So foreign policy, when we talk about the topic, the founding father's vision was to keep it in our mind. When we talked about foreign policy, ke certain principles outlined kiye the, first amongst, among many was, our foreign policy is one of the frontline nations in goodwill towards all the nations of the world. This actually conveys the uh, intention of Pakistan's foreign policy. If you want to be friends with us, we are up for that. If you want to be friends with us, in the politics, in the economy, in society, in the technology, or in any kind of life, we are all up for that. Uh, it's a subtle reference to 1948 ke context in India. Ke tha, India was actually blaming Pakistan for harboring ill will and hostile attitude towards, for example, New Delhi. Jinnah Saab cleared that very stance through this particular statement. At the same time, Jinnah Saab said that we do not cherish aggressor designs against any country or a nation but Pakistan would do what it takes to ensure its territorial integrity, its sovereignty, and uh, datter other countries to meddle into the internal affairs of the state of Pakistan. The other principles, principle laid down in the foreign policy of Jinnah was, we believe in the principle of honesty and fair play in national and international dealings, and are prepared to make our utmost contribution to the promotion of peace and prosperity among the nations of the world. That necessarily implied that Pakistan would not be a state that would sit idle at home or that would have an inward looking state's perspective. That we will be able to We have extended that whatever our international environment is, where we think we contribute, we would leave no stone unturned to actually benefit the international community, particularly for promotion of peace and prosperity. Next principle and the last principle to discuss here was Pakistan will never be found lacking in expanding its material and moral support to the oppressed and suppressed peoples of the world and in upholding the principles of the UN Charter. This had a categorical reference to the uh, ongoing freedom struggle in occupied West Bank and Gaza uh, and the Palestinian territories and the occupied Kashmir that India illegitimately occupies and continues to do so. 
but over the course of time uh, things have changed but the inherent vision has stayed same even today pakistan's foreign policy to start with introduction has this fundamental theme that from now onwards pakistan will only partner in, in any other country in peace reflecting this the consistency uh, with the ideals of the ideals laid in the speech of jena we would not become a part of any other conflict we would not join any other country in any conflict this is what is a narrative of the incumbent prime minister of pakistan so agar hum ek basic introduction pakistan ki foreign policy ka dekhe to uh, pakistan ki foreign policy over the course of time bahut hi highs and lows ka shikar rahi hai in cold war pakistan was aligned with america then uh, abandoned by america then again had a uh, had a had a for example strategic alliance with the america in the form of fighting soviet union out and later the post 911 developments actually brought them, brought them together uh, otherwise they were in pakistan was previously abandoned by the united states of america but over the course of time this whole alliance of war on terror became so much trickier an alliance that america kept on blaming started blaming pakistan that pakistan hunts with hound and hides with hare so this approach basically this american approach basically forced pakistan to have introspection of its foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis america that uh, allies do not put each other on notice allies do not sanction each other or allies do not speak in this rebuking language at the end of the day so what pakistan has learned today is that we have been fighting america's war on terror and that had been very consequential so this statement basically is a reflection of pakistan's mindset today that our focus is stability at home and supporting stability abroad before going deeper into the discussion let's have the conceptual clarity of certain topics, certain key terms what is foreign policy we have a domestic policy and then we have external or foreign policy a foreign policy is basically uh, a policy uh, that consists of strategies which are used to protect international and domestic interests and determine the ways it interacts with the other states and non state actors और फॉरेन पॉलिसी का बुनियादी तौर पर जो मकसद होता है वो ये होता है कि किसी किस तरीके से हम अपना जो कौमी मफाद है उसे सिक्योर कर सकते हैं ऑफ एंड दैट इज नॉन वायलेंट बट इफ नेसेसरी वॉट आर सर्टन लीगली वायलेंट वेज टू सिक्योर दैट वेरी इंटरेस्ट आप कह सकते हैं कि टोटैलिटी ऑफ स्टेट्स इंटरक्शन इन दी एक्सटर्नल इन्वायरमेंट इज वॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट दी फॉरन पॉलिसी इवन हेनरी किसेंजर वन से दैट that the foreign policy is basically the reflection of the domestic policy if a state is stable at home it is liable to be stable in the external environment what are objectives of foreign policy pakistan's foreign policy consists of the following objectives which include but are not limited to promotion of pakistan as a dynamic progressive moderate and a democratic islamic country there are many countries around the world which try to blame pakistan that it is allegedly a state sponsor of terrorism it is a state taken over by the radical uh, organization it is a state where there is no space for the minorities or where the religious persecution is basically rising and pakistan is controlled by centralizing tendencies so our first objective is basically to shun this notion debunk this notion that this is the total propaganda against the state of pakistan we are not so in fact we are dynamic we are progressive we are moderate and at the same time democratic as well as islamic country next is developing friendly relations with all countries of the world especially with the major powers and the immediate neighbors हमारी फॉरेन पॉलिसी का मेजर प्लर ये है कि हमने बेसिकली uh, जैसे इंटरनेशनल इन्वायरमेंट के लिए कहा जाता है कि यू कैन हैव द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ योर ओन चॉइस बट योर नेबर्स आर परमानेंट तो हम नेबर्स के साथ अमन के साथ रहना चाहते हैं एंड एट द सेम टाइम जो भी मेजर पावर्स हैं विच इंक्लूड्स चाइना ऑब्वियसली विच इंक्लूड्स रशिया यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका सम यूरोपियन लैटिन अमेरिकन 
African, or even Middle Eastern countries, we would develop, maintain, and expand their friendly relations with all those countries. But at the same time, one categorical objective must stand open to all, and that is we would safeguard the national security, geostrategic interest, including Kashmir. Our foreign policy resonates with this particular theme as well. Okay, Kashmir is not just a part of foreign policy. It is basically a major part of foreign pol policy of Pakistan that basically determines Pakistan's relations, uh, particularly with our neighbor, India. Next is consolidating our commercial and economic cooperation with the international community. This simplifies that our relations with the countries around the world would so not solely be geopolitical or geostrategic. We at the same time believe in the geoeconomics as well. Uh, international community here simply means uh, all countries which are uh, except Pakistan. In Pakistan, we have all the countries in the world, 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 Safeguarding the interest of Pakistani diaspora abroad. This is again very important aim of our foreign policy because uh, they are also Pakistani Pakistan. They are also Pakistanis who live abroad, who constitute diaspora of Pakistan and play a very vibrant role in actually branding uh, what Pakistan is. Uh, I mean, actually uh, reforming the image of the state of Pakistan as a whole. Ensuring optimal utilization of the national resources for regional and national co international cooperation so that Pakistan uh, power hai or just security hai wo maximize ho sake. We can be major power and its circumstances and the geopolitical environment and our friends uh, and our overall alliances mielo, can be superpower short of becoming hyperpower. Pakistan ki foreign policy ki kya major determinants. We have just categorized this debate into internal and external uh, determinants. In internal, you can say that the geopolitical environment shapes Pakistan's foreign policy. Napoleon Bonaparte once said that the geography is the mother of strategy. And as I told you uh, just, a, just a few minutes ago, that you can have friends of your own choice but your neighbors are permanent. So the shift in the geopolitical environment actually shapes a country's foreign policy. So since its birth, Pakistan's geopolitical environment had been very hostile, particularly instigated, violence instigated by the India and, and the irredentist claims laid by uh, let down by Afghanistan, that shaped Pakistan's geopolitical environment. And hence, the idea of security state came to dominate the foreign policy. But over the course of time, again, hum aur bhi le le. So it was a Soviet invasion in Afghanistan. That was, again, the change in the geopolitical environment that brought new changes. America's involvement in Afghanistan in the post-9-11 era, that again brought Pakistan into equation what it is now. And now, again, American withdrawal from Afghanistan and the uh, expansion of Indian foothold in Afghanistan as a security threat to Pakistan basically constitute what we call the geopolitical environment that shapes Pakistan's foreign policy. Next is historical legacies and past traditions that have been laid down in the speech of Jinnah, uh, the, the points we have already talked about. Then the socioeconomic conditions that we have, uh, hum, hum economic stage, ke, hum society, ke par kya hai? Kya hum ek aise society hai jo aapas mein integrated hai, taake hum kisi, uh, uh, jo, uh, foreigner hai, outsider hai, uske mein nahi aa jate. we do not work for this uh, enemy state. Economic condition simply means kya hum makroos riyasat to nahi hai, kya hum uh, industrial state hai. Char basically economic stages hoti hai na, aapke paas ek to agricultural stage hoti hai, phir semi-industrial, phir industrial, aur phir aajkal ki jo state hai, wo hai phir aapki knowledge economy, phir jahan techno-economic economy. 
तो इकोनॉमिक स्टेट बेसिकली शेप्स पाकिस्तान फॉरेन पॉलिसी इफ इफ अ कंट्री इज इकोनॉमिकली डिपेंडेंट ऑन अदर कंट्रीज डेफिनेटली इट वुड नॉट हैव दैट मच से इन इट्स फॉरेन पॉलिसी फॉर एग्जांपल दैट वाज पर्टिकुलरली एविडेंट इन प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स स्पीच कोट एंड कोट के बाद पाकिस्तान सिंपली को डिड पार्टिसिपेट इन क्वालालंपुर समिट वाज on one hand because pakistan wanted to avoid the fissures within the muslim world but at the same time uh, a few countries actually exercised economic leverage over the state of pakistan and that actually led to a a, a subtle subservient sub foreign policy in that particular uh, space and time they for another in, in instance pakistan's economic conditions didn't allow to start hostilities with america by saying it no in the post 911 security environment so pakistan simply became partner of, of america in the global war on terror so political system and structure this is important we have two types of political system one is democratic and other is dictatorial in former the decision making is basically decision making related to foreign policy is based on the public opinion ke log kya chahte hain for example in 2015 when pakistan was asked by saudi arabia to send its troops into yemen war, war pakistan simply said no we can't do that because pakistan's public opinion didn't allow that and the democratic government at that point in time actually uh, couldn't take decision in sending troops because the public opinion was against that but in dictatorial uh, governments public opinion has little space in fact the narrow circle or the leaders will becomes a general will for example that happened in uh, let's say uh, in, in the time of siyal haq when pakistan actually supported american uh, led um, american sponsored and pakistan supported mujahideen movement in afghanistan to drive the soviet union out and that was exactly the case with pervez musharraf in the post 911 era uh, on one hand it is true that pakistan was intimidated uh, pakistan was coerced into uh, becoming part of american uh, alliance in war on terror but at the same time this fact has also categorical clearly clear that uh, because the decision making was centralized into one individual the foreign policy decisions decisions were also uh, rested with that individual then the ideological consideration aap dekhen ki ye sari cheeze kitni bhi tabdeel ho jaye if your ideology doesn't allow that we would not do that for example this is classic case aap dekh sakte hain ki in different countries all around the world different muslim countries in fact all around the muslim world are recognizing the state of israel but we have certain ideological considerations and limitations uh, that we would not recognize the state of israel as long as the just settlement of the philistinian cause is not achieved so um, at the same time ideological consideration can actually come up with the geopolitical considerations as well for example we also do not recognize uh, armenia uh, because we have good ties with azerbaijan and azerbaijan and armenia have competing claims in the what recently happened or what happened uh, in the 40 days long war in nagorno karabakh so ideological consideration coupled with the geopolitical considerations also shape a country's foreign policy <clears throat> but the most important uh, in many things is the decision makers dream their images and the motives that the what are the uh, priorities of the government uh, at hand and what is the mandate of the government actually given by the people that also matters at the end of the day then we have certain external factors as well which include external environment uh, internal environment simply mean what are the uh, internal security threats we have in the form of political economic or security threats 
we have to do with the external environment as well. What is the nature of polarity? Who is dominating the international environment? And what are the trends in the international environment? Then we have to look up to the power consideration that how power is basically divided in an irrational environment. Is the world unipolar? Is it bipolar? Or it is multipolar? And the decisions are taken accordingly. Then there is issue of alliances and counter alliances. This also matters and matters a lot. Then role of the international institutions. Yes, I'm thinking okay, America is using uh, international financial institutions to course Pakistan and change its behavior as America wants in order to achieve American interests. Then what is international public opinion? For example, Pakistan <clears throat> actually became part of uh, US-led war on terror because international public opinion also demanded that. Whole international community was actually uh, raging with, uh, with anger against those terrorists. So what is vision of foreign affairs today? We have a three, four vision that Pakistan believes in the economic recovery. Pakistan will not be partner to any country and the focus is on the good governance and improving international standing. So having said that, let's have a chronological overview of Pakistan's foreign policy of the year 2018 to 21. So Pakistan's foreign policy started with the extending olive branch to India. In fact, we went on telling to the world that we will not start the war, both Pakistan and India are nuclear powers, and if tensions escalate, the world will face danger. Uh, even Prime Minister Imran Khan told himself that I want to take India. That war is not a solution to any problem. The winner in war is also a loser. War gives birth to a host of other issues. Or Pakistan kept on investing in India from Kartarpur corridor to, let's say, saying publicly, <clears throat> if India steps two, uh, takes two steps towards Pakistan, we will, we will take two. But what was the response of India? India responded with the, uh, let's say, alleging Pakistan with the, and the idea that it is a state sponsor of terrorism without actually looking into the facts. India went on telling international community that Pakistan was behind Pulwama crisis and there was a dog fight on February 27, 2019. And this was followed by uh, the revocation of Article 370 and today the relations are uh, basically on the lowest ebb. The second uh, thing that we saw in Pakistan's foreign policy was religious harmony and peaceful coexistence. And this was particularly and this was particularly manifested in opening Kartarpur corridor, where Pakistan's prime minister say that I am always so happy to see this community who have come here. God lives in the hearts of all of us. All the messengers who have come and gone only ever brought two messages, and that of peace and that of justice. Like in Kartarpur corridor, on one hand, Pakistan opened that very corridor. It was the same fateful day on which Indian Supreme Court gave the verdict on the Babri Masjid. And the verdict categorically said that Ram Mandir Babri Masjid ke saad banega. In fact, the out of three portions, two were dedicated to why? Okay, two were dedicated to uh, basically uh, Bab, uh, to Ram Mandir. Then Pakistan's focus was in rationalizing Kashmir issue. Uh, Kashmir issue, uh, basically, pehle bhi international issue hi tha. <clears throat> Lekin, this came to dominate international politics and international political landscape after India revoked Article 370. And the government of Pakistan, Ministry of Foreign, uh, Foreign Affairs, went on telling that Kashmir issue could be resolved through dialogue as the war could not be a solution to any problem and those looking for that option were the fools. 
पाकिस्तान ने कश्मीर इशू को इंटरनेशनलाइज करने के लिए यूएन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल यूनाइटेड नेशंस इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनल क्रिमिनल इंटरनेशनल कमीशन फॉर ह्यूमन राइट्स यूरोपियन यूनियन एस सी ओ और जो ओ आई सी जैसे मुख्तलिफ और इनके ऊपर इस इशू को एक्सपेंड किया एट द सेम टाइम पाकिस्तान लेट से इस्टेब्लिश सेपरेट सेल फॉर the cause of kashmir pakistan uh, shaped public opinion uh, by uh, by mobilizing people on weekly basis for the kashmir or and took some uh, to, to, took some defensive measures in order to protect the kashmiri cause because india wanted to convert this cause into a terrorist movement nothing short of that बाकी इसके ऊपर जो तफसीली गुफ्तु है वो हम फिर कश्मीर कॉज में करेंगे अभी हम एक ओवर भी ले रहे हैं पूरी फॉरेन पॉलिसी के इन पैराडाइम्स का क्लोजर स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप ऑफ विद चाइना दैट हैज बीन अदर मेजर मेजर टूल ऑफ पाकिस्तान फॉरेन पॉलिसी और उसमें मेजर हमारी जो चीजें थी वो सी पैक टू पॉइंट ओ था ब्रिंगिंग चाइना क्लोजर इन इन इट्स कोऑपरेशन ड्यूरिंग पेंडेमिक एंड एट द सेम टाइम द सपोर्ट ऑफ चाइना वाज इम्पोर्टेंट इन एक्चुअली थॉटिंग अमेरिका टू मोर इम्पीरियल टोन और द प्रेशर ऑफ इंडो यूएस नैक्सेस next important was us taliban deal on february 29 2019 uh, 2020 last year and that was basically one of the greatest achievements in pakistan foreign policy because it facilitated the peace process and the the geopolitical geopolitical lens of afghanistan started shifting and pakistan actually सपोर्टेड दिस आइडिया ताकि उसकी जो ईस्टर्न विंग है और जो वेस्टर्न विंग है दोनों में पीस हो ईस्टर्न विंग में पीस तभी आ सकता है जब हम ऑन वन हैंड अफगानिस्तान वाले फ्रंट को काम कर सकेंगे एंड देन व्हेन इंडिया रियलाइजेस दैट इंडियन एम्बिशंस टू वीक इन पाकिस्तान फ्रॉम विद इन आर यूजिंग अदर कंट्रीज वाइल टू एक्चुअली सपोर्ट टेररिस्ट मोमेंट्स इन पाकिस्तान के नॉट सक्सीड देन इंडिया वुड डेफिनेटली कम टू नेगोशिएटिंग टेबल then there was pakistan's middle east policy having closer ties with the kingdom of saudi arabia but that those ties also faced a few lowest points but then the ties are again gathering momentum at the same time pakistan started maintaining closer ties with the state of iran as well because pakistan considers and this is a central theme of pakistan's middle east policy that on one hand saudi arabia is a geoeconomic necessity but iran is a geopolitical reality that we must acknowledge then at international level pakistan became very vocal in supporting the idea of countering islamophobia in fact pakistan's former ambassador to united nations maliha lodi gave a six point program to counter islamophobia now there are various ways one can counter islam uh, the international community can counter islamophobia and they include but are not limited to legislation by countries to address racism and faith based hatred uh मुख्तलिफ ममालिक को ये कवानी बनाने चाहिए कि किसी को किसी रंग नस्ल या मजहब के ऊपर जो है वो उससे नफरत नहीं की जाएगी आप देखें कि यूरोपियन कंट्रीज में हालोकास्ट नायल के ऊपर लेजिसलेशन है अब इस मसले के ऊपर एंटा सेमेटिज्म के ऊपर लेजिसलेशन है वाई आर नॉट वाई आर देर नो लेजिसलेशन रिलेटेड टू इस्लाम दिस बिकेम द इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसर्न सेकेंड इज monitoring social media platforms to prevent hate speech and negative stereotyping this is very important kyunki social media nahi basically jo islamophobia se related stereotypical attitude hai usse janam diya hai and that is stereotypical attitude needs to be actually tamed in order to actually have a breathing space for the muslims in international community or at least in the west then there must be a focus strategy to counter islamophobia this simply means that we should have a clear cut plan and all countries specifically from the muslim world and our allies must be taken on board that this issue is not solely the muslim issue 
this can be a this is a global issue and all countries must focus on that as well increasing investment in research to identify root causes of religious hatred and then increasing engagement of the women and youth last but not the least investment in education then coercion by international financial institutions you can talk about the policies of imf jaise shuru mein america ne pakistan ko jab qarza jaat diye to us waqt there was peace process going on in afghanistan और पाकिस्तान वॉज बेसिकली फोर्स के जब तक आप तालिबान को नेगोशिएटिंग टेबल पर नहीं लाएंगे द मेजर्स ऑफ आई एम एफ वुड बी गोइंग टफर इनफैक्ट आई एम एफ वेंट ऑन टेलिंग पाकिस्तान दैट यू वुड हैव टू ओपन दीटीज दैट यू हैव साइन विद चाइना रिलेटेड टू सी पैक टेक द केस ऑफ एफ आई टी ए फाइनेंशियल एक्शन टास्क फोर्स पाकिस्तान इज लूजिंग सम एट मिलियन डॉलर एनुअली बिकॉज ऑफ द एटीट्यूड अडोप्टेड बाय द एफ आई टी एफ एंड दैट इज प्योरली पोलिटिकली मोटिवेटेड मूव बाय दू एस नैक्स दैन पाकिस्तान फोकस इज नाउ नॉट ऑन द हार्ड पावर बट ऑन द सॉफ्ट पावर एंड टूरिज्म एंड रीब्रांडिंग पाकिस्तान बिकॉज पाकिस्तान हैज एन इमेज प्रॉब्लम in a rational community we have been represented sadly and unfortunately as a state that is prone to terrorist violence a state that is failing a state structure that is weakening a nation that is in chaos a country that is destabilized so pakistan's focus is to rebrand itself that it is not the country as is propagated by the enemies of pakistan Pakistan also has started de-securitizing its foreign policy which simply means no use of the non-state actors in extension of the foreign policy goals so what has pakistan achieved so far up in sub issues ko zehn mein rakh ke uh, you can talk about certain geopolitical achievements geoeconomic achievements your strategic achievements what pakistan has achieved during this particular time लेकिन अगर हम एक थोड़ा सा क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस देख लें कि पाकिस्तान का ओवरऑल इन सब चीज़ों के बाद अब क्या सिनारी रहा है वो ये है कि पाकिस्तान अब चाहता है कि हमने फ्रेंडली एंड कोऑपरेटिव रीजनल सिक्योरिटी स्ट्रक्चर अडॉप्ट करना है जिसमें कोई पॉलिटिकल डिस्प्यूट्स ना हो मिलिट्री कॉम्पिटिशन ना हो या स्ट्रेटेजिक कॉम्पिटिशन ना हो वी वॉन्ट टू डिवेलप वी वॉन्ट टू सिक्योर वर्ड सेल्स एंड वी वॉन्ट डिवेलप Uh, together secondly pakistan also realizes that there is a realization of peace through economics ke military means ke through peace kabhi nahi achieve ho sakta militarization nuclearization armament arms race cannot lead to peace in fact that leads to security dilemma now our focus is we want to materialize bri and its flagship project china pakistan economic corridor and at the same time supporting the regional economic integration and technological revolution ek aur major take away pakistan ki foreign policy mein ye hai ki we now believe in the widens of the military conflict uh, both with the with the state actors uh, this avoidance doesn't mean ke we don't want to secure our interests but we know that if nuclear weapons go to war no one is winner and at the same time we actually uh, condemn every unilateral move in an interstate relations because that is not in line with the international international practices uh, international norms and the charter of the united nations pakistan ab ye bhi baat bilkul samjh rakhi hai ki on one hand we have pax indo americana and there are stresses within that very in the, in, in the international environment so the only country that pakistan can rely is china so there is a need of a strong pak china friendship to help pakistan emerge as a militarily strong and economically dynamic state the other major takeaway is that you can actually write our pakistan facilitates peace process in afghanistan or pakistan has a deep sympathy with the afghanistan people of afghanistan that how the indian state sponsored terrorism has weakened them weakened them a lot 
and how uh, Afghanistan as a failed state has become home to multiple non-state actors which have been exploiting ordinary Afghans. In fact, Afghanistan, just like said, it is a it is a graveyard of empires. It is today a graveyard, but not of the empires, but of the ordinary Afghanistan, Afghan people. Another takeaway is Pakistan uh, ka consistent focus on Kashmir issue. Ke upar, ke Pakistan is doing all it takes to actually convince India to lift the curfew in Kashmir and find its resolution as per the UN Charter as well as the Kashmiri people. Next is in an rational environment, there is a rivalry between US and China. Pakistan is also trying to manage that and find a space for breathing space for itself. And as I told you that Pakistan considers Saudi Arabia as a geo geopolitical, geoeconomic necessity and Iran as a geopolitical reality. Pakistan is trying its best to actually have a balanced relation in that paradigm. Next, fighting Islamophobia. And next is Pakistan is going to be part of multilateral bodies to address three chronic evils, and that include terrorism, separatism, and extremism. But there are certainly many challenges. And those challenges can be in the form of threat of Thucydides' strat uh, in major power relations. There is a potential of Iran, Saudi rivalry, conflicting into a war. US China tensions can translate into war, or even India Pakistan tensions can be translated into a war. That is a major challenge. Then Afghanistan centric American ties and Indo US nexus is a major challenge. In fact, America is basically strengthening India to a scale unimagined before. America, Indo American military uh, industrial complex is threatening the strategic stability of South Asia, but not only of the South Asia, but of the globe as a whole. And this is one of the important challenge and threat to Pakistan's security, stability, and obviously its foreign policy. There are vested interests which are tightening the news around Pakistan. For example, it can be in the form of IMF, it can be the form of FATF, and it can be in the form of many other international organizations that have been endlessly uh, pushing Pakistan uh, and cornering Pakistan, and that is also a ma major challenge. Thucydides' strategy is that you can see that the status quo power is not an emerging power. आप से ये समझ लें ग्राम टी एलिसन की किताब है कैन यूएस चाइना अवॉइड थ्यूसिडिटी स्ट्रैप थ्यूसिडिटी स्ट्रैप की डेफिनेशन ये है कि स्टेटस को पावर फील्स थ्रेटन बाय द राइजिंग पावर दैट इज कॉल्ड थ्यूसिडिटी स्ट्रैप आप देखें कि अमेरिका क्या है स्टेटस को पावर है चाइना क्या है राइजिंग पावर है सो अमेरिका इज फियर्ड Basically, America is afraid by the rise of China, and this basically fear can translate into a war. Javier Armand, you have written that the weak, weak, weak suffers, the strong can do whatever he wants. This is a million dialogue. This is not a Thucydides' so, trap. So, the Thucydides' trap is what I have told you. Next is emerging emergence of multipolar order has its own complexities because multiple power centers are ja going In fact, India is uh, India has become part of multiple uh, agencies of the United Nations, and this is basically also a threat to Pakistan. We don't know how the declining American hegemony uh, would would have consequences for international peace and security. Uh, the revival of Russia, the enhancing role, enhanced role of China, all these things actually have uh, their own complexities and issues at hand. Then financial institutions, uh, unsettled issues on domestic front also weaken Pakistan's ability to articulate a 
proactive foreign policy. At times we have a bit reactive foreign policy, but we need to make it more proactive. So what is way forward? What is future recommendations? First and foremost thing is the frank civil military dialogue and a joint institutional response to the country's challenges on external front is the need of all. Jab bhi kisi mulk mein civil military relations mein balance hoga, the synchronization of the narrative hogi, tab hi ja ke coherent strategic script banega, jo ke ek mulk ki foreign policy ko ek effective foreign policy mein translate, convert karne mein aham kerdaar ada kar dega. Next thing is, we must set house in order. Uh, this is something, uh, this is the argument by Pakistan's national security advisor, Muid Yusuf. He basically, he is basically of the opinion that foreign policy, of the opinion which we have discussed that foreign policy is basically the reflection of the domestic policy. Until so, our domestic policy is better, a domestic concepts and resolve, we would not be able to be assertive uh, and uh, assertive in actually pursuing our national interest, or we will not be able to actually achieve what we want to achieve in international environment. Next is new and constructive theme, just may have militancy, ke CB form, ke rejection, kerling, or hum. Uh, basically military se economic ke option economics ke option ki taraf jo hai wo move kare and in this sense major doctrine of first one major principle that is jihad is the prerogative of the state so these are basically the concluding remarks ke these factors are very much important to achieve foreign policy objectives and make long term relations with the other states all around the world